everyone and welcome back to Brown Coat Reviews. I'm your host, Laura. Now here at Brown Coat Reviews, we do different comic book reviews, we go behind the scenes, we show some cool collections, and we have everyone's favorite show, Married with Comics. So please make sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment on these videos. We have some amazing giveaways as a thank you to all of those are help who are helping us grow. Now today we are going to talk about the illustrious Yara Floor. But we're not going to focus mostly on Future State. We're going to talk about her new series, Wonder Girl. Now, technically, Joelle Jones wrote the Future State issues as well as the Wonder Girl series. She did the art. It is phenomenal. I did, of course, start with the Future State because this was released first and then we had this series. However, as we know, Future State with its timeline is a little messy. So I can't even tell right now if this is a prequel to Future State. That's my assumption at this point. But as far as I can tell, one issue in, you don't have to have read the Future State Wonder Woman to understand this series yet. There may come a time where finally the timelines start coming together. But as of right now, they're sort of separate entities. There's not been a crossover of the characters. There is this one image, which I'll zoom in on in a minute, that has a character that was in the future state, but I don't know if she's going to continue to make a lot of extra appearances and is going to reference what happened in future state. So, sorry, I can't answer that one for you. I will say that this two issue series was amazing. It was one of the very few issues within the future state run that I absolutely loved, but that's also why we have this series. Fans just absolutely fell in love with Yara Floor. Part of that, I think, is because of how different Yara Floor is from Wonder Woman. Now, the perception of Wonder Woman is always that she's like Superman. She's on a pedestal. She doesn't lie. She's always going to do the right thing. There's always this sort of line that she doesn't cross. Yes, she does have a huge heart for people. Her goal is always peace. But there's definitely that kind of warrior calculating side of her. She has strategy and she's willing to apply it, especially when she's in the Justice League and when she's in these different collaborations with Batman, Superman, and many, many other superheroes. Yara Flora, on the other hand, is a very impulsive character. She is the type of person that sees a situation, even hears people saying, don't do it, don't do it, it's dangerous, and still goes through with it. Is that going to be her main character flaw? I don't know. But there's definitely something in those moments that sometimes we can definitely relate to or we sort of empathize with. This series starts with this beautiful little flashback where the warriors are trying to take on this villain here. And we have Yara Flora as a child, sorry, and her mother kind of holding her in her arms and protecting her. And in this beautiful little moment, Yara Flora goes from being a child being protected to breaking away from her mother to then take on the villain herself. Like, look at that face. That is a child who does not feel fear. And even after this confrontation is almost finished, there's not even this like flickering moment where she's like, ooh, did I make a mistake? It's this childlike determination that says, no, I am going to do the right thing. I'm going to save people. And that's the sort of passion that she brings to these stories. Now, we start Wonder Girl kind of in present day where Yara Flor is traveling to Brazil. She knows that she was born there, but she hasn't been back to the country, and she knows very little about her roots. So this is definitely kind of a discovery tale. All we do know is that for some odd reason, her being in Brazil is a horrible thing. This isn't a story with just Themyscira, with kind of us on the other side of that hidden wall. We also have a lot of Greek mythology that's coming into play, and we also seem to have something else building there's there just seems to be more with this story we are going to have some more mythological creatures make appearances 
And I'm wondering how much of that Greek mythology is coming into play. And then are we going to get some other religions or other stories because Yara Flora was born in Brazil? So that could be a really, really cool cultural kind of conglomeration. And I'm really intrigued by all this instead of just having it be a traditional character from the mascara or, you know, created by the gods and released unto mankind. So really cool. The other thing I did want to say beyond, yes, I am a Joelle Jones fan. I loved Lady Killer. Can't wait for her to write volume three. Loved her Catwoman run. Loved her artwork on Batman. She's just an absolutely amazing artist, woman, writer. Love her work. However, I do love to hear that everyone else is starting to really appreciate what she's bringing to the table and everyone else is also loving Wonder Girl. This image is one that everyone has been talking about. It's just, it's this beautiful, beautiful piece of art. And just sort of draws you in and makes you see that yes, Wonder Girl, all eyes are on her, even though in reality, all of our eyes are on Wonder Girl and all of our eyes are on Joelle Jones because this is a brand new superhero. Yes, there may have been other Wonder Girls, but we've never heard of Yara Floor before she was created by Joelle Jones in the Future State series. So the other aspects of her character haven't been written. There are no misconceptions. There are no assumptions we're starting from scratch. And a lot of times that's a really intimidating place to be in because when you start a character from scratch, especially when it's Wonder Girl, you are constantly going to be comparing Yara Floor to Diana Prince. It's just the way it is. But so far they've made enough of a unique stamp on Yara Floor that I don't feel like I'm missing something. I don't feel like I, every page need to be comparing the two origin stories. They are definitely existing in our world, but have different kind of bases. But I just, I can't wait for this character to continue to build and become more than what she is right now. I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating. And knowing Joelle Jones and what she can do with these characters, I think we're in for a great ride. So if you have not already grabbed it, grab Wonder Girl issue number one, read it. If you're going to wait for the trade, just make sure to grab it once it's released. I think you're going to be really, really impressed, but I'll let you know when we get a little further along in the story, you know, how it's been progressing. And if I have the mysterious answer of whether this for sure is a prequel and does the timeline kind of skip around and include some of the future state, or is this just kind of meant to be its own separate standalone entity? Same thing with the future state justice league. I'll let you know. At this point, I'm just enjoying a great story. So tell me down in the comments, did any of you actually make it through the Future State story? Did you make it through Future State Justice League? And there was also the Future State Wonder Woman Superman. Good grief, she appeared in it quite a bit. But the all important question is, did you like her in the Future State stories? And did you like Wonder Girl? Did you prefer one over the other or are you just enjoying the character regardless of where you see her and now you're waiting to see what happens to her next? Let me know. This is Laura from Brown Coat Reviews and I will talk to you all again very soon. Have a great day.